It's no secret that drones have been breakthrough stars in Ukraine's defense against the ongoing Russian attack. What's impressive is that Ukraine's drone program grew from a crowd-funded group of hobbyists who steered the country's massive defense against its counterpart, taking it by surprise. Ever since Russia invaded Ukraine, it is evident that Ukrainian drones are being used to the greatest effect to target Russian logistic elements that supply ammunition or fuel to frontline forces. It is believed that Ukrainian soldiers have been using drones that have been directly bought off the shelves to look Russian military targets and to help coordinate aerial artillery strikes. Reports from the battlefield have also claimed that Ukrainian soldiers jury-rigged homemade drones with explosives before maneuvering them at Russian tanks. The footage of drone strikes which are supplied via live feed to base stations have also proven to be powerful information weapons as Ukrainian soldiers have been directly uploading them to social media to garner awareness about the war. Ukraine is largely using the Turkish Bayraktar TB2 armed drones which were provided courtesy of a deal that was sealed in 2021. Operated by ground crew, these drones at their core are remote controlled planes that are armed with missiles or rockets. These drones are small and lightweight, about seven times lighter than the US military's Reaper. With a wingspan of 12 meters, the drone can remain in the sky for a maximum of 30 hours for a stretch of time. Each drone can carry four laser-guided missiles which, according to Baycar Technologies' promotional material, are produced by the company itself. Reliable and highly accurate military drones were once exclusively limited to the US military. However, in recent years, the technology has become more competitive and drones are now commonplace on several 21st century battlefields, with Turkey being one of the most prominent suppliers. In the last two years, Turkish Bayraktar drones have appeared in Ethiopia, Libya, Syria and Azerbaijan apart from Ukraine. In 2021, in Ethiopia, a rebel force that was bearing down on the capital Addis Ababa was countered by drones. In the conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, Turkish drones played an important role in the Azeri victory against Armenia, which was, incidentally, a Russian ally. For Turkey, which is a NATO member, the drone sales to Ukraine align with its military interests, which is preserving the balance of power in the Black Sea region, as stated by Galeb Dale, a specialist on Turkish and Middle Eastern politics at Chatham House. Although Bayraktar drones are being manufactured by Baykar Technologies, which is a private company, the drones are largely believed to be a feather in the heart of Turkish foreign policy. According to Haluk Bayraktar, the company's CEO, countries like Israel, the US and China were reluctant to sell armed UAVs to Ukraine, so Turkey became the only country to accept selling Ukraine, selling this technology. The videos of Bayraktar drones inflicting casualties upon Russian convoys were all but surely shared by the Ukrainian military to raise morale among its troops. But with Russia still holding strong and now concentrating its efforts on eastern Ukraine, the morale is likely to be short-lived. Baykar, on the other hand, will continue to reap the rewards into the future as the TB2 drones have demonstrated Turkey's growing defense industry where the items are battle-tested. According to Daley, these kinds of conflict zones are actually PR opportunities for the Turkish drone industry. Videos released by Ukraine's armed forces demonstrate one of the key selling points of the Bayraktar drones. They can inflict disproportionate damage on enemy hardware far more cheaply than competitors' drones with the added benefit of being low-risk. According to Tony Osborne, the London Bureau Chief of Aviation Week, a magazine that's focused on the aerospace industry, the Bayraktar drones sold to Ukraine cost single-digit millions of dollars each, possibly less than $2 million each, whereas the Russian surface-to-air system they destroyed was likely worth about $50 million. It is estimated that Ukraine has around 20 such drones in its operational arsenal currently. In December, the media outlet Bloomberg reported that Ukraine had placed orders for a dozen more drones. Other than the Turkish Bayraktar drones, Ukraine has also been using small, nimble drones that can be redeployed to carry out scores of successful missions against Russian offensives. Called Punisher drones, these UAVs can travel long distances without being detected owing to their size. As a result of their feature, they've been wreaking havoc behind Russian enemy lines. While the use of these drones itself is not a surprise, it was surprising that the Ukrainian military requested drone hobbyists to donate their drones to the cause. While it is unlikely that the military will arm these drones to be used in combat, they will serve as excellent decoys for the combat drones they've been using effectively so far. The Punisher drones have a wingspan of 7.5 feet and have an endurance of a few hours when it flies at an altitude of 1300 feet. For the most part, its flight is automatic as the drone requires only the coordinates of its targets to fly. Once it is airborne, the drone uses a companion drone called the Spectre to do the reconnaissance work to help identify stationary targets for the Punisher. 
The latter can then strike either by deploying its entire payload that contains about 6 pounds of explosive in one go, or it can deploy the explosives at three different targets. Although the details of the Punisher's deployment are classified, a Business Insider report estimates that it has carried out more than 60 successful missions in the conflict to date. With the ability to fly up to 30 miles behind enemy lines, Ukrainian forces have used this drone to attack supply lines of Russian troops. Fleets of this drone have blasted patrol terrain, convoys, targeted ammunition stocks and other electronic warfare systems. To make things more interesting, let's dive into the drone's origin story. The Punisher was designed and developed by UA Dynamics, a company launched by veterans who had fought against Russian troops during the annexation of Crimea. Backed by this drone, Ukrainian forces have been able to strike deep within Russian lines without risking their troops, which also includes civilian recruits who joined the force to fight for their country. Just a few months ago, Ukraine passed factory tests for its all-terrain drone, the Peacekeeper. Created by the Ukraine-based company Synergy DPE, the Peacekeeper, or Merit Voritz, is a modular unmanned ground drone that is capable of great things when used with its aerial counterparts. According to Ruslan Jalilov, the general director, the Peacekeeper's system of optical vision and communication allows it to receive video from cameras and control the robotic platform at distances ranging from 2 to 2.5 kilometers in indirect visibility. The vehicle's abilities were demonstrated at low temperatures on a snowy terrain that had difficult road and weather conditions. The multi-purpose robotic platform is ideal for military units since it is designed to perform activities like reconnaissance, evacuation, logistics and other special tasks. The unmanned ground drone has been engineered with low-pressure tires and is built on a transmission base that is stable and durable. Other notable features are that the base has amphibious properties, has a low noise level while driving which makes it inconspicuous during military missions and has a long range. Since it's an all-terrain vehicle, it can maneuver through rivers, snowy areas, lakes, swamps, trenches up to a meter, and deserts, which is what makes it ideal for combat zones. The goal of the Peacekeeper is to increase security and mobility for future missions. But this is not all that Ukraine has got on the drone front. Despite more than a month of constant bombardment by Russian troops, Ukrainian forces have remarkably defended the country's cities using cost-effective drones that have lethal effectiveness. To bolster Ukraine's drone army, the United States announced in the third week of March that it would provide Ukraine with the kamikaze drones as part of an $800 billion weapons package to help defend the country from Russia's invasion. The shipment was set to include 100 unmanned drones, reportedly called switchblades or small suicide drones that explode when they hit a target. According to Sky News, aerial drone footage had become an integral part of destroying Russia's armored vehicles, so it's no wonder that the US is strengthening it. The drones that are being delivered by the US are named after the tactic employed by Japanese pilots in the Second World War, where small planes were loaded up with explosives and flown directly into Allied warships. There are two types of switchblade drones, namely the 300 and 600 series. The former is intended for use against personnel, whereas the latter is intended for use against armored vehicles and tanks. Both switchblade drones are reportedly small enough to fit into a backpack, can carry cameras, explosives and guidance systems and can cruise at around 100 km per hour before dive bombing into their targets. The drones will also be able to disengage or abort a mission if required according to the operator's commands and can be recommitted to another target. It's yet to be seen whether Ukraine's enemy, Russia, finally deploys its drones in the war, for it has taken a refrained approach to use drone systems so far. It has used the Orlan 10 and Kubla suicide drones on a small scale, but the use of these drones is yet to be confirmed. Will the war escalate into a drone-only one? What do you think about Ukraine's drones? Comment below. If you enjoyed today's video, smash the like button, click subscribe and tap the bell icon to never miss a video from us. Thanks for watching and goodbye. Goodbye.